Welcome back to this channel. This is a multi-part tutorial on building a five string fretless bass. If you're just joining us, welcome. I encourage you to go back and watch the previous episodes. In the episode before this, you saw us cutting down the five strips of wood that go up to making the, uh, the neck length that we're gonna use. Also dimension it down to the proper widths and then gluing up and putting it in clamps. And more clamps. And still, more clamps. Yes, and more clamps. More clamps. You guessed it, more clamps. This is what uh, Clampzilla looks like. No woodworker has ever said, I have too many clamps. You would be lying. Okay, you just watched me take this neck blank out of the clamps after it, been, after it uh, was sitting overnight. And uh, I know I got a good, good joint between the, the uh, five pieces of wood. Um, the fact is that uh, a glue joint is, uh, is going to be a lot stronger than the actual fibers of the wood. So if this were to ever break, it would be uh, along the wood uh, grains instead of the actual uh, link between the, the glue that we use. Uh, so a glue joint is stronger than the wood itself. So I'm not worried about uh, the strength of, of this ever coming apart. Uh, also, we've got, uh, you know, three good pieces of wood here. This is actually uh, harder than the maple. Uh, and then uh, we've got the grain that is, is uh, going against each other. So that's going to make this a lot more stable piece. Uh, then I just uh, knocked off all the uh, the glue squeeze out and the drips. Uh, typically, I would I would take care of that before it completely sets up. Probably like 10 minutes after I I do the glue up, I'd go back with uh, some kind of a blade or even like a like a used credit card and, and just kind of knock off the the glue. So I just decided that what I actually want to do first is, is run this through my jointer uh, just so I have a level face to work off of and that there's no kind of uh, uh, twist that, that uh, goes into the milling process. Because um, what I noticed is if you look during the, the joining of the joining process, I got kind of a stair-stepping action going on. And that's, that's really something that uh, uh, I should have avoided from the start. Uh, but I think I might have been working too fast uh, because I, when, when you're working with a, a multi-layered uh, joining project, you're kind of racing against the time of the glue starting to set up. Uh, so I might have went a little too quick on that and uh, uh, started with a problem. So. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and flatten one face before I mill it. Now the jointer is basically the power tool version of a hand planer. Its purpose is to level and square the face and edges of the stock that you're working with. The way it works is you've got the center blade there spinning on a barrel. So it's actually three blades in, the, in this case. Next we take it to the drum sander now that we've got a, a uh, level face. Now the level face goes uh, belt side down in this case so that it's going to pass under the, the sandpaper drum which is, which is mounted over the top. So we're, we're milling the top of this, this surface here, the top of this board. 
and we're, we're passing this over many, many times. You see the crank there on the uh, to the left of the screen. Uh, as I turn that, I'm raising the bed ever so slightly and taking off more material off the top as it passes under the uh, under the under the drum. Okay, so I'm really glad I took this to the jointer uh, before I went through the, the sanding process uh, for leveling uh, because there was kind of a twist that was uh, was glued into place um, and it would have it would have just made it worse if I went ahead and and, uh, and leveled the faces before I jointed and uh, established the flatness of one side. So this is what I've got. It is perfectly level and uh, square uh, with the faces anyway um, the, the edges probably not so much I don't really care about the edges because in the end that's all going to be waste as I uh, go ahead and uh, determine the profile of the neck and the taper um, so yeah here it is all done ready for the next process we got to route a center channel for the truss rod uh, and then we also have to set this up and do the scarf joint, which is to take a, a slice off of uh, off the top, off the end uh, where the peg head is at an angle. And then this whole piece comes off, flips, and gets glued. So you've got uh, a level uh, fretboard area up to the nut, and then it tilts back. And we're going for seven degrees on the uh, on the back tilt. Um, there is a purpose to that, um, and it's to help sustain uh, the sustain quality of, of the of the notes. And uh, so, yeah, that's going. That's kind of a complicated process. You got to get the cut just right from the beginning, and uh, it can be kind of nerve wracking because you screw that up, you you got to start over. Basically, who wants to do that? Here I am coming to you from the future through the magic of post-production. Uh, when last I left you, a mere couple seconds ago, I was talking about the construction of this neck and the joining of the, uh, the five different pieces. So one thing that I need to talk about now is the, is the overall dimension of this base. Uh, since, uh, since last we spoke, a couple seconds ago, uh, I've went ahead and finalized some dimensions on the design. Uh, this neck blank is only 40.5 inches and as I've mentioned already the neck blank has to be the entire width of the whole base which is just about 43 inches which makes me a little short because at 40.5 inches I've got to come up with some more uh, length here and I talked about how I did am going to do that. Uh, also what we have to talk about is the thickness down here at the body. Uh, this is one inch wide. Uh, the total body width is 1.75 inches. So we've got to come up with some more space. Uh, also consider that uh, this being one inch wide uh, has to be thinned down overall. Uh, the neck is at its widest about one inch and tapers down to to seven eighths of an inch. Not much of a not much of a taper, but still uh, a noticeable slant from from here to here. <clears throat> also consider that uh, a quarter of that one inch is fretboard. So this whole thing has to be trimmed down to a final uh, width of 0.75 inches. So we're losing a quarter inch off of this part here. And we're going to call this the heel. And I'll show you why here in just a second. Um, also, the fact that let's see, here's here's a line right here, which is where the the body starts. So the body's going to be about yay, yay long. Um, so at the body, it's going to be uh, have a maple cap um, for the beauty of the maple. So this is going to be trimmed down about a half inch more on thickness. So you're gonna have a bit of a stair step here. 
uh, on the final dimension. Uh, so the heel. This is what I've completed while uh, <laughs> since, since the last time I was filming. Uh, this is an 18 inch uh, duplicate of this uh, using the same wood of course and how this is going to work is I'm going to join it the same way we've been doing it with glue at this line which is going to give me a heel which is I'm going to get the full thickness of the body out of this also the length I'm going to take a three inch cut here take this uh, cut off and reattach it here so I have a full neck blank that is the uh, full length of the of the guitar from head to tail that's going to come together in three inches and there will be seams but they will be hidden by the wings of the bass guitar with the ash that is here this is one of the one of the pieces and also the maple top you're going to see a seam at the back and also you're going to see a transition here where it goes from this is the three quarter inches that i talked about of the neck plus the one quarter inch fretboard you're going to see a transition go like this where it, where it joins up with the body and i haven't got a full I haven't got a full layout for how that's going to look, but uh, I can imagine it. Um, so I am not going to glue this on uh, and construct the heel just yet. First thing I need to do is do the scarf joint. And there's going to be a whole episode, probably next episode, just dedicated to the scarf joint. Uh, the reason I'm not going to attach it now and then do the scarf joint is because that scarf joint is is going to be a critical cut and if i screw that up this whole thing is trash and if i've already got it joined then this and this are wasted whereas if i wait to screw up the scarf joint then i've still got the 18 inch piece the heel and uh, i've got enough wood enough maple uh probably to screw up two more times but uh I'm not even gonna, I'm gonna wipe that from my mind now because that's not positive thinking. So now with all that said, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on time-lapse for you to enjoy the rest of the video and uh, show the construction of the heel and uh, I'll talk through that in a little bit. Okay, so we're back to basically the same process as we used for the neck. I'm getting my dimensions copied over from the neck, just, just validating them. And then I'm copying them over to the, uh, the decorative maple piece. And then, uh, then taking it over to the, no, I'm still working on the decorative. Now, now we're going to the center maple piece. Measuring that out, tracing my lines. Pretty easy stuff. Now the masking tape, we talked about using that as, as sort of prevention for tear out as you're using, as you're, as you're cutting it. Um, so the other good reason for masking tape is, is being able to see your line on this dark wood. Of course, safety first. Take it over the bandsaw, we're getting the the uh, size, the basic size, but not the uh, thickness. I'm gonna save the cutoff part for handsaw. That's just to preserve more of the, uh, the uh, waste, to prevent waste from the, the more expensive pieces of wood we got there. I just got this crosscut saw from Lowe's, 12 bucks, and uh, it was just giving me fits, binding up real bad, 
and uh, just wasn't real happy with it. You can see that, I'm just having trouble. I'm gonna switch over pretty quick here now to the, uh, the handsaw I've got. And just takes it right off, no problem. Put my tools away as I go. I haven't been very good at that. I'm just, I'm trying to deliberately clean as I go. All right, so there it is, linked out. It's not to the dimension yet. So now I'm measuring the edges, because I'm gonna take it back to the bandsaw and cut it on edge. Exciting stuff, right? But seriously though, safety, you gotta protect your, your senses your and your fingers. Um, these uh, always use hair protection, eye protection, even if it's just for uh, shortcuts. Just takes a moment for something to go wrong. It just takes a moment to put it on. keep all my major power tools on on wheels on carts with wheels just because obviously my my space is limited and if you just take the time to to build those yourself it's totally worth it if you if you've got limited space now the drum sander is something that uh, a lot of woodworkers want but it, they don't see I, don't, I think they don't see it as being totally necessary but I'll tell you I've used this machine, probably more than most of my other machines so far, um, it's definitely you know a, a staple piece of my of my uh, armory here. I use it for almost every project. Cause I felt the same way. You know, I didn't think it was necessary, but I sure wanted one. I have no regrets. This is a Grizzly machine. Grizzly makes a wide variety of heavy duty power tools. At a reasonable price too. Watch for the salamander that flies by. We got lots of shop buddies. I think, I think we're overrun by salamanders this year. And there it is, final dimension. And now back to the glue up process. These 24 inch bar clamps that I've got laid down are brand new, used it a couple times. One of them is defective and I took it back to Woodcraft already and they uh, exchanged it. It, it. The screw mechanism worked fine until you got it under pressure, but then it, it bound up real, real easy and uh, the, the screw was, was chewing itself up inside uh, and you'd actually get like shavings of metal and still it wouldn't get you know, a tight a tight squeeze so I took that back and they replaced it can't stress enough how important it is to get lots of pressure on a glue joint. 
here. Looks like I'm standing around waiting for glue to dry. All right, and there we are. Back to jointing, getting that flat edge, not flat edge, but flat face that we can work off of. So, uh, as always, if you like what you see, uh, go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell notification and uh, stay tuned for, for more build tutorials or uh, if you're not in it for the tutorial, you just like seeing the process, go ahead and stay tuned and uh, I appreciate any feedback.